Welcome everyone to our Sunday worship service today in Jesus' name. And I pray that the word of God will reach every heart, enlighten everyone, and do good in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you because you are a God of love, a God of mercy, and yet a God of judgment. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we look at your word today, you send your word forth into every life and let it penetrate every heart in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, all we need to do that will escape the final judgment. You help us and lead us so we can escape in Jesus' name. We pray that nobody will be careless of their own soul. We pray that nobody will forget that the judgment day is coming and all who reject Christ, who neglect their salvation, will face that judgment on that great, cheerful, and fearful day. We pray, O oh Lord, you help us today to take in your word and to act on the word and to believe and to live the way you want us to live, to glorify your name and prepare for that glorious day in Jesus' name. Bless everyone today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Revelation chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 11. Revelation chapter 20, and we're looking at verse 11. It says, And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And then in verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, according to their faith, according to their character, according to their lifestyle at this time of probation on earth. They were judged according to the things that were written according to their works. And then in verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, every man, every man, without exception, small and great, young and old, they were judged, every man, according to their works. And then in verse 14, it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. In verse 15, it tells us, And whosoever, young or old, and whosoever, man or woman, and whosoever, from the first generation until the final generation, and whosoever in the church, outside the church and whosoever religious or not religious and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire romans chapter 3 we're looking at verse 23 romans chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god then in verse 24 it says being justified freely. There is justification. There is salvation. There is conversion. There is the mercy of God coming to the penitent, repentant, sorrowful sinner, turning away from sin and coming to the Lord. The Lord forgives. And the Lord says, at this time, being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, in verse 25, whom God has set forth 
to be a propitiation that Christ, the Father, the Almighty, has set him forth. Before the final judgment comes, he sends a redeemer. He sends a savior. He sends someone that will pay for our sin, the substitute for everyone, the sacrifice for everyone, the savior for everyone, the sanctifier for everyone. The Father, God in heaven, has set him forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. There's the forbearance of God. That's the reason why he has given us all this time, all this period, many generations waiting for everyone because he's not willing that anyone shall perish. He has long suffering. He has forbearance. He has mercy. And he's saying, why will you die? Not only the whole house of Israel, but everyone in the world. Why will you die since Christ has come for us as Savior, as substitute, as the final sacrifice, the acceptable sacrifice? is now telling us that because the forbearance of God is there, is pleading with everyone that we turn that we repent, that we get saved, and we give ourselves unreservedly and totally, wholeheartedly unto the Lord, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Look at that. The remission of sins that are past. The eternal security people tell you, they say he has forgiven all your sins, past, present, and future. Before you even commit them, that's not right. The sins that are past are the sins that God forgives when you come to him. And it's through the forbearance and the long suffering of God. Then in verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time is righteousness that he might look at this be just and the justifier is judge on the final day is the justifier at this time the savior at this time the redeemer at this time the justifier of him which believeth in Christ, in Jesus. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and instead of going to that white great throne of judgment, He forgives you, He redeems you, and He becomes your justifier. That's why we're looking at the message today. The great judge, or the gracious justifier, which one will He be for you? If you receive him today, he forgives, he cleanses, he saves, he transforms your life, and then you're justified. He is the justifier. But if you neglect the justification, if you reject just the justifier, if you neglect this so great salvation that the Lord has made available for everyone, and you go on until death without salvation, then it becomes the great judge. The message, the great judge of the gracious justifier. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the judge supreme yet gracious. Number two, the judgment of small and great. Number three, the joy of saints in glory. Let's look at number one. Number one, the judge supreme, yet gracious. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the, the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Verse 27, but 
a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fairy indignation which shall devour, which shall consume the adversaries, adversaries of God, adversaries of godliness, adversaries of the gospel. And then in verse 28, it says, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. And then in verse 29, how of how much sorrow punishment, greater punishment, more terrible punishment, and more painful punishment, suppose ye shall give a thought worthy who has trodden on the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace look at that verse it says there are people who are saved and sanctified they backslid they went back to their vomit and instead of coming back and retracing their steps they count the blood of the covenant by which they were sanctified. Now they count that blood an unholy thing. And they have done despite to the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace, the spirit of God pleading with them that they will come back. They neglected, they rejected, they pushed away, and they have done despite unto him. And then, as the Lord is standing before them and pleading with them, they tread over the Son of God. They said, get out of my way, otherwise, if I can't walk out from you, then I'll walk on you and still go my way. He said, those people will receive much sorrow punishment understand when it says the great white throne judgment are for sinners yes for sinners that the believers have been judged at the bema seat yes but we need to explain if you are saved and your sins are put on christ and you remain with the lord and you, did, you don't take those sins back and become sinful again. If you remain and you endure unto the end, Jesus himself said, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. But if you say, My sins are forgiven, I am saved, I'm a child of God, and then you go back to sinning because of the wrong notion that the sins of the believer had been laid on Christ and the believer will not come to judgment anymore on the account, on the basis that you do not go back to sin and you do not die as a sinner. If you die as a sinner, as a backslider, if you die as the person that rejected the mercy of God to the last minute, you still appear at the white throne judgment of God. It says in verse 30, in verse 30, for we know him that has said, vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The judge supreme, yet gracious. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the incorruptible judge of hard-hearted sinners. The people who are hardened in sin, the people, whatever reason they have, who continue in their project of sinning. They love sin. And when the warning comes, and when the gospel message comes, instead of obeying the gospel message, they go deeper into sin, they go further into sin, their hearts are hardened. There is the incorruptible judge of hard-hearted sinners. Number two, 
the irreproachable judge of forty sinners they are so proud they don't accept anybody they are higher than the prophet they are higher than the apostle they are higher than the bible they are higher than the messenger of god and they look down on everyone and if you are not going to accept the message from anyone and the people that god has sent and you are haughty a haughty proud high-minded sinner there is the judge the irreproachable judge of forty sinners number three now there's the immutable justifier of humble souls he still has mercy and he calls us he says if we come whosoever will call on the name of the lord shall be saved and if you are a sinner if you are a backslider if you are at the edge at the periphery you are neither in nor out one leg outside one leg inside and the lord is calling you and is saying we don't know when the lord will come and we don't know when the judgment will strike believe today accept today and then there'll be an immediate justification from the immutable justifier of those who are humble humble souls before the lord number one here is the incorruptible judge of hard hearted sinners revelation chapter 20 verse 11 it says and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. They were so afraid they knew they could not stand and there was found no place for them. And then in verse 13, we're told that the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Please understand. The Bible says very clearly, it is appointed unto men who wants to die. And after this, immediately after death, there is judgment. Please understand. Man has three parts the spirit the soul and the body the body is uh, the avenue by which we contact our environment our community and the world the spirit is the part of force and that's the real man really the inner man that's the one that contacts god we commune with god not with our heart not with our physical eyes with our spirit the soul is the one that has feeling when you know somebody smites you and you feel pain that's your soul and when you feel sorrowful that's your soul and when you cry that's your soul when you feel depressed that's your soul the spirit the soul and the body when a believer dies now immediately the spirit and the soul will go back to god who has given it and the body is here on earth is buried in the sea on la in the land on the soil anywhere and now the unbeliever if the unbeliever dies now the spirit and the soul will go to hell hell is a place of punishment hell is a place of suffering in torment and in fire that's what jesus christ told us about uh, that a uh, rich man who died and then uh, lazarus died lazarus was carried by the angels not his body his spirit his soul carried into the presence of god and then uh, the body was buried the body remained here on earth but then uh, at that time when uh, there'll be that final judgment of the whole earth from the first generation of human beings until the final generation then uh, the spirit and the soul of the sinner that had been in hell will be brought up from there and then the body that had been uh, in the earth will be joined together and that man will become complete again spirit soul and body all the dead in hell who are suffering their spirit and soul will come and join with their body and hell will be emptied and now because of the final time 
death has no job to do anymore. Since the Lord told Adam and Eve that the day you eat of the fruit of that tree, thou shalt die. Death came into action and death has been killing and killing and killing and now final judgment has come. Hell is emptied and then death, you have no other work and death is put to a final death itself and so after that great white throne judgment since hell had been emptied that hell is a compartment of the dead unbelievers they will be will be put into the lake of fire and death too in the lake of fire and satan and the false prophets and the antichrist all in the lake of fire and uh, those some believers all joined together now a uh, spirit soul and body in the lake of fire what's the difference between hell fire and the lake of fire in hell fire you only have the spirit the soul of the unbelievers of the sinners who die in their rebellion in their sin in the lake of fire you don't only have spirit and soul you have spirit soul body all joined together to be forever and ever in the lake of fire now god is that incorruptible judge god is the one that makes that final decision and he tells us in daniel chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 9 daniel chapter 7 verse 9 i beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days that's god that's the almighty that's the creator of heavens and the earth all those sinners will not have any opportunity to live here on earth why if not for the goodness of the almighty the ancient of days that created them and they have neglected him all throughout their lives and it says the ancient of days did siege whose garment was white as known and the air of his head like pure wool his throne was like the fairy flame and his wheels as burning fire then in verse 10 it says and a fairy stream issued and came forth from before him thousand thousands ministered unto him and it says ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was said great white throne judgment the judgment was said final judgment the judgment was said inescapable judgment and then the uh, judgment was not like okay i like you okay come to the right hand side you i don't like you come to the left side not not at all it is done according to what had been written in the books and the books were opened we're looking at romans chapter 2 in romans chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 5 but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treacherous up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Those who are hard-hearted, don't have any feeling towards Christ who died on the cross of Calvary. They've read the story, they've heard the story, how Christ shed his blood, how he cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There was no trouble, there was no pain like his pain before all the sins of the world put upon him so that he can be the substitute and suffer for the sins of humanity. But these hard-hearted people, they don't care for the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, after your impenitent heart and after your hard heart, you treasure unto yourself, unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. And then he tells us in verse 6, it says, who will render to every man according to his deeds, according to his character, according to his lifestyle, according to his willful action here on earth. 
there is God, the ancient of days, the incorruptible God, the incorruptible judge, it will render to every man according to his deed. And then in verse 7, it says to them, who by patient continuance in well-doing, say for glory and honor, there'll be immortality and eternal life. And then verse 8, in verse 8, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth the truth of salvation comes they do not obey the truth the truth of repentance comes they do not obey the truth the truth of regeneration of newness of life of the possibility of grace coming into our lives turning us around and changing us came unto them the sound doctrine the truth that can move us from earth unto eternity and be in the presence of god forever and ever the truth came unto them they were contentious and they fought against the truth and they, they obey unrighteousness. There will be indignation and wrath. And then in verse 9, it says tribulation and anguish, trouble, torment and anguish, sorrow and suffering upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the gentiles then in verse 10 it says for glory honor and peace to every man that walketh good by grace walketh good no man is good by himself only when grace comes only when salvation comes and you turn to the lord and the lord says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone opens the door of his heart unto me i will come in i will sup with him i'll fellowship with him and the entry of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior brings grace and it brings strength to obey the word of God and he said to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles in verse 11 he tells us for there is no respect of persons with God there is no respect there's no partiality there's no favoritism that one is the one that brought uh, you know the church or village no favoritism that one is the one that started this good thing uh, and then all of, all of us are following now on the basis you continue in righteousness and holiness all the days of your life before the lord that's the only way by grace you can be rescued and you can be released from the judgment of god but if you say well god knows who i am he knows my name he knows my worth he knows my value he knows who i am i don't think god will cast anybody like me to hell and then you continue in evil you continue in sin you continue in rebellion against the lord it says there is no respect of persons with god let's look at number two here number two here is the irreproachable judge of the haughty sinner the haughty sinner the one that is proud, the one that is incorrigible, and the one that is unrepentant. There is the judgment of God, and when God brings the judgment, you cannot reproach him, you cannot ask the question, why, why did you do that? You must remember he judged Adam and Eve the very first parents of the whole of humanity on earth you must remember he judged Cain you must remember he judged Nadab and Abihu you must remember he judged Korah, Dathan and Abiram you must remember he judged Achan you must remember he judged Ananias and Sapphira you must remember he judged the first treasurer of the church of the New Testament that Judas Iscariot you must remember many of the people in the Corinthian church many of them fell asleep because of their sin they died in rebellion in sin before their time and you understand this judge is the one that judges the herod and the and the pharaohs and the nebuchadnezzars of all time the irreproachable judge of haughty sinners he tells us in hebrews chapter 12 verse 23 to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven and to the god the judge of all 
the judge of all the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect in verse 24 it tells us and to jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of abel verse 25 c that she refused not him that speaketh for if he escaped not who refused him that spake on earth much more shall not we escape if we turn away you understand that language we the writer of hebrews includes himself paul includes himself all the apostles include themselves if anyone turn away from him and you ought to include yourself if you turn away from him that speaketh from heaven he speaks about repentance do you turn in or do you turn away he speaks about regeneration about the grace of god that comes into our lives and that grace of god teaches us to be sober to be righteous and to be godly are you turning in your life are you turning away he teaches us that will follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord do you turn in your life and say Lord I surrender I give myself to you save me if you are not saved sanctify me if you are saved but if we turn away we turn away our mind we turn away our soul we turn away our attention from the Word of God much more shall not we escape the judgment of God if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. In verse 27, it says, and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaking as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Verse 28, it says, therefore, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Serve God with reverence and godly fear. Now, if there is no possibility of going back, if there's no possibility of losing your stance in Christ, if there's no possibility of judgment anymore, your Savior forever saved, and you will not come to judgment anymore. Anything you do, you are by yourself. And God is an indulgent God. He cannot frown at sin anymore. He cannot say, why this, why that? Why will there be reverence and godly fear? The fear that if you went back to sin and you remained in sin and you died in sin, the judgment of God will still be upon you forever. That's why he said, wherefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Then verse 29, for our God is a consuming fire the god of eternal security people their god is an indulgent god he doesn't frown at anything once you are saved you are forever saved but for the people who are new testament believers for our god is a consuming fire that's why we know that judgment day is coming that final judgment day will come but the grace is available now that brings us to number three here and it's the immutable justifier of humble souls in james chapter 4 reading from verse 6 but he giveth more grace he gives grace at salvation but he giveth more grace the grace to endure all temptation he giveth more grace the grace that was sustaining you and you will remain abiding in the lord he giveth more grace the grace to be sanctified and the grace to serve the lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life he has given grace he'll give grace again he'll give grace again he giveth more grace where wherefore he 
says, God resists the proud. God resists the proud. God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, there he says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. If you have um, backsliding, humble yourself. Don't, don't start saying, I did this, I did that, I'm this, I'm that. Who are you before God? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we'll read from verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we're looking at verse 6. It tells us, and the Lord thy God is ready thy God when you are born again, is thy God when you have come out of Egypt, and you're on your way to Canaan, the promised land, is the Lord thy God when he has forgiven your sin. And there's no condemnation now because you are not living in sin anymore. It's the Lord thy God when you are a man, you are a woman, you are a boy, a girl in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. After salvation, there's sanctification. After conversion, there is the circumcision of heart, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. And when he does that, and he takes the depravity out of your nature, he takes the fallen nature out of your nature, what then will happen? You will love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and that thou mayest live look at verse 15 it says see i set before thee this day life and good death and evil he wants you to choose you can choose whether you want me to wait for you on the final day to be your judge or you want to reconcile with me now as your justifier I put it before you. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. You know what the Lord is saying? He's saying, I'm not going to impose eternal life on you. You have to make your choice. I'm not going to impose on you salvation, regeneration, new life. You have to make your choice. I'm not going to impose on you the abundance of the grace of God. You have to make a choice. I can be your justifier today. I can be your judge on the final day. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and causing therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Ezekiel chapter 18, we're looking at verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son and of the daughter is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. It's your choice. It's your choice. Whether you live or whether you die, whether it's your justifier to forgive your sin now and to set you free from the chains and the shackles of sin, it can be your justifier or it can be your judge if you, re if you reject the justification in Bastachi. It tells us, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his way. Says the Lord God, repent. After he said, I will judge you, he said, but you can still make your choice and you can repent. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. In verse 31, he says, cast away from you all your transgressions. Not only some sins, okay, that sin landed me in trouble. I'm going to 
give up that one. That sin was discovered by my wife. I will never do that again. And she, you know, she has a high blood pressure, and that thing almost claimed her life that I did. I'll not do that again. But these other ones that are private, and nobody knows about this one, I'll keep on to this. There's no forgiveness. There's no salvation. But those who are selected in confessing and forsaking their sin, cast away from you all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die O house of Israel look at the language of the Lord why will you die I don't want you to die but I am judged and I will judge you but for you to escape that judgment you will turn away from your sin in verse 32 it says in verse 32 for I have no place in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. We'll come to point number two now. Point number two is the judgment of small and great. Revelation chapter 20, we're looking at verse 12. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great. I saw, now please pay attention, don't allow people to confuse your, your heart, your mind with what they dreamt of and they saw. You cannot compare them with John, the beloved apostle. You cannot compare them with John, that God gave this revelation to signified by an angel and the Lord revealed all that will happen from that time until the end of time and when you have learned the word of God in the Old Testament and New Testament and something had not been mentioned in any of those uh, parts of the Bible then somebody comes to you he says it's a prophet he says it's a Christian he says you know this is what he saw that he saw many people and they were in hell because of this and that and we check off from the Bible we cannot find anything like that what a shame that somebody will become afraid of somebody's dream. Come back to the Bible. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And other, another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work now on what basis will the dead be judged they'll be judged by what is in the book of god and the book of god as the bible in the last chapter the lord has said don't add anything to it god has revealed everything he wants to reveal and don't subtract don't take away anything from it he has revealed everything that he needs to reveal there's judgment coming for small and great and then in verse 13 we're told and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which wine them and they were judged every man they were judged look up here the dead body with no spirit and no soul cannot be judged it's corpse it's dead it has no feeling slap it pinch it pierce it no feeling cannot be judged even if you throw it into fire it's burnt up it doesn't have any feeling any pain any torture any torment but when the spirit and the soul come back into the body and it now becomes a complete man a complete woman a complete boy a complete girl it is the spirit we have within the body now that makes us feel pain it is the soul we have in the body now that makes us feel pain and so the dead body is in the grave is in the sea or is cremated and burnt up 
But then, when there is resurrection, the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust, and the spirit and the body and the soul, and they are all together now. They will be judged every man according to their works, small and great. Three things here. Number one, the inescapable judgment of corrupt, small, and great. Number two, the interminable judgment, the judgment that will never terminate. The judgment is pronounced and they are sent to the lake of fire and they are forever and ever there. The interminable judgment of condemned small and great and now to escape that judgment is the indispensable justification of converted small and great. Let's look at number one, the inescapable judgment, the inescapable judgment of corrupt small and great. Look at that verse 12 again, and I saw the dead small and great, old and young, little and big, small and great. There are assemblies, there are churches where they say the youth, the children, are the church of tomorrow. No, they're the church of today as well. When judgment comes, the Lord will not say they're small, they're young. There are churches where the small, the young, the little ones, all they do now is go there and exchange letters during the service a change what they call love notes during the service all they're interested in in those churches is that they drum and dance and what they call worship they're not worshiping god they're worshiping their body they're worshiping their dancing they're worshiping what they like there are churches where they don't teach those young people, the children and the youths and the young adults there, they don't teach them the way of salvation, the word of repentance and the word of restitution and the word of righteousness. They say they're still young, you know, children are children. But God says when the judgment comes, the judgment will come on the small and the great they will stand before god and the books will be open all that those young people are doing they know it's wrong if a little child steals he know it's wrong if a little child ill treats and beats the junior brother or sister he know it's wrong if the little child will take a knife and then they plunge it into another person they know it's wrong if a little child boy or girl will abuse and insult the father or the mother and you know because it's young and let me be the appearance have indulged them they know it's wrong there's judgment for the young. There's judgment for the adults. If a child in the church, any church, our church, you see, I'm still young, and they will do this and will do that, and they commit sin, and they say the pastor cannot do anything against that because if the pastor talks about it, will take his word, we know how to use the social media, will paint him black in the social media. Well, that is sin as well. And you don't know when the judgment of God will come. It will come suddenly when many people are not prepared. And it says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. Everything you do, whether you are young, you are old. Everything you do, whether you are a child or you are the parents. Everything you do, they go into the book of rest. Records. And when you repent and you are born again, then it will blot out your transgression. It will blot out all the sins that are written there. And it will transfer your records and your name into the book of life. For the old, for the young, for the great, for the small, for the parents, and for the children. But if the judgment day comes and there's no repentance, the judgment day comes, there's no change of heart, the judgment day comes and there's no salvation, 
the books will be open and then the lord will say you know there'll be no hurry because eternity is there uh, still to spend and god will say come on here look at this and this and this and this true what do you expect now then there's judgment and then you're sent to the other side before that happens i pray there'll be repentance let me hear church amen small and great look at chapter 11 verse 18 chapter 11 verse 18 and the nations were angry and thy wrath is calm can you imagine a nation being angry against god a community angry against god your family angry against god you angry against god well that's the story and the dead, and it says, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great. Small and great can fear the name of the Lord small and great can keep themselves and yield themselves to the lord small and great can repent and small and great can pray with conviction and with real deep contrition and give themselves to the lord and be saved but those small and great if they do not repent and be a part of the people that destroy the earth and destroy other people on earth that thou shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth. I pray God will help every one of us to have the right attitude and to approach His word in the proper way in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth while you are still young in the days of the youth remember him as the creator remember him as the one that so loved you and gave his only begotten son so that you will not perish but believe on him remember him who is willing to forgive everything that you have done and is willing to turn your life around and then to serve him so that on the final day judgment will not come upon you while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And now in verse 7, verse 7 of that um, chapter 12, then at the point of death, then shall the doors return to the earth as it was that the body at the point of death the dust the body will return back to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto god who gave it now in bustatine in bustatine let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments but this is the whole duty of of man verse 14 it says for god shall bring every work every utterance every conversation every deed every action all that man has done that has not been forgiven that has not been cleansed that was covered up you see there are people all they are trying to do is cover up their sin so that man cannot see. They are not uh, interested in God cleansing them, blotting out their sin. They have done that. I want to protect my name. If that comes out, it will tarnish my name. That name you are trying to protect when the judgment day comes in the view of all people 
all over the earth in all generations will be brought out and then you'll be told you are a big zero a big hypocrite you are a secret sinner let that sin be cleansed now let that light change now while there is chance but on that final day god will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil look at number two here number two here is the interminable judgment of condemned small and great it tells us in john chapter 3 verse 18 john chapter 3 verse 18 it is that the words of jesus he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed on the name the only begotten son of god and then in verse 19 it says and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil why do people stay in a place where they're preaching false doctrine where they look at the bible and they turn the bible upside down and they know that that that's not you know their pastor has not interpreted that word correctly and they love it and they stay there because their deeds are evil why are some young people running away from a church like this their parents brought them and they have been here from the children's church now they come to secondary school level or maybe university level and then they decide they're going to go to a drumming dancing assembly somewhere you know why the deeds are evil they have not been born again and because they are not born again they do not like i mean those who go away like that or false places they do not appreciate the sound words of god this is their condemnation that light is come into the world and men lord darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil verse 36 in verse 36 he that believeth on the son has everlasting life he that believeth not on the son shall not see life but the wrath of god the judgment of god the indignation of god the punishment coming from god abideth on him we come to number three here we can still repent and we can still call upon the lord and the lord can still forgive and set us free and justify us and put all the blame all the punishment on christ to die for us the indispensable justification of converted transformed saved regenerated small and great we're looking at um, Rebe at uh, revelation chapter 3 revelation chapter 3 we're reading from verse romans chapter 3 we're reading from verse 24 romans chapter 3 verse 24 being justified freely by his grace that's the grace that justifies us freely justified by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus the justification comes as we believe on the lord as we hand over and surrender our lives to the lord in verse 25 it says whom god has set for to be a propitiation through faith in his blood 
he shed that blood when i see the blood i will pass over you what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus the blood of jesus christ is so cleanseth us from all sin whom god has set forth to be a propitiation the atonement the covering and the cleansing through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission for the removal for the forgiveness for the cleansing of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Verse 26, in verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time, at this time, at that time when the judgment day comes, will be too late. At that time, at the great white throne judgment, that will be too late. At this time, at this time of grace, at this dispensation of grace, it says to declare, I say, at this time is righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. As we believe today, he'll take all the sins away in Jesus' name.